Hi everybody, Dr. Doresti, Cranial Release. Back with another video, not gonna be too long today. A couple of good questions came in since I did these last few videos about the birth process, the primary respiratory mechanism, <coughs> excuse me, how it's all connected. And the question came, well, what about the child that's born C-section? Where does that fit into the, the scheme of things with cranial release technique? And it's an excellent question. And I normally cover this in my live events. Certainly want to make sure practitioners understand and patients that when the child goes through the normal delivery, the normal birth process, we have the compression of the cranium and then as the cranium exits, we have the decompression of the cranium, which is normal and natural. And that sort of kickstarts the primary respiratory mechanism. Great. Now we go through the C-section. And now the child never has the compression and therefore the decompression. So, yes, there is still a primary respiratory mechanism that's happening. But in theory, it's much weaker because the child was denied the normal delivery, the normal compression and decompression. So although I would say all children would benefit from the cranial release technique, I would say certainly any child born C-section, it should almost, I mean, to me again, all children mandatory should have cranial release because we want all these bones to be moving normally the normal primary respiratory mechanism, but again, especially the C-section delivery, especially C-section. So I hope I answered that question. It's sort of self-explanatory. Again, when we go through the normal birth canal, we're getting this compression as labor is happening, as the head's passing through mom's birth canal, and again, the head exits, and now we get the decompression, and that's that's normal, and that's sort of kick-starting the primary respiratory mechanism, if you will. So sort of taking it very, and I'm going to exaggerate here, I don't have my Hoffman sphere with me right now. If the child in mom's womb, we have that primary respiratory mechanism that's doing its best, it's chugging along, and now we go through the birth process, the normal delivery, and I'm going to exaggerate here, but let's say that should be happening, and that's normal and that's natural. And now we go through C-section, it's probably still that sort of weaker, not fully stimulated primary respiratory mechanism. So again, all children should receive cranial release, in my opinion. The younger, the better, and especially kids that were delivered C-section, especially. And the, the cranial release technique delivery of, to a child the actual application of the technique to an infant or a child is like the easiest thing in the world when you know what you're doing. It's much easier working on a child than working on an adult. And if you ask any chiropractor, any acupuncturist, any naturopath, any therapist that puts their hands on people, the younger always is the better. The younger responds much quicker because the problem has been there a shorter amount of time. So the same holds true with cranial release. I would much rather work on a 10-year-old than a 60-year-old because I know the response, although the response is going to be great with the 60-year-old, I know the 10-year-old is going to bounce right back much quicker. And I've actually, the younger, though, even better. You know, the, the week old, the day old is even, <laughs> the younger, when I mean the younger, I mean like right after delivery better. Absolutely, the younger the better, like immediately, hours after delivery. I mentioned in another video, I think the youngest I ever did was a child that was maybe a day and a half, maybe two years old. It was, was the most incredible, incredible experience when I applied the cranial release. You actually felt the cranium open on one side. And then when I went to the other side and applied the technique, you felt the cranium open on the other side. Absolutely incredible. As if a sponge, when you squeeze a sponge and let it go, how it springs out, that's what I felt when I applied the cranial release. 
And again, another question just came in the other day about do we use balloons in the cranial release technique? And a few months back, I had a lot of questions about cranial release and balloons. Apparently, there are quite a few people on YouTube and other websites using the term cranial release technique with balloons. And in the world of cranial release, which you'll see me talking about it, there are no balloons. So my official YouTube channel, there's no balloons in the cranial release technique that I do and that I teach. I'm not saying that balloons are good. I'm not saying the balloons are bad. I don't know enough about it, so no comment. But I can tell you that in the work of cranial release technique, as taught by me, William Doresti, there are no balloons because I haven't found a need to use balloons. I'm using the patient's own intracranial forces, the own patient's forces to do the actual correction of the cranium from inside out by applying the cranial release technique and use and working with the patient, actually allowing the patient's body to do all the work. So that's, that's the beauty of cranial release. It's very simple, it's very gentle, and it's very, very effective. Okay, if you'd like more details, or everything's on the website at cranialrelease.com. I think that's all I wanna to say today. This is Dr. Doresti saying adios, my friends. Enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy the holidays. Speak to you soon. Be well, my friends. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.